<laughs> I say that all the time. Donovan! <laughs> Getting the cold shoulder, I think he's got a bug, and giving it your best shot. Today, we're back at it, breaking down and reacting to all of the hilarious medical scenes and chaotic injuries from The Simpsons. Let's dive right in. Oh! <laughs> the amount of people that come into the emergency department and tell me that they have been bitten by a spider, yet none of them have actually seen the spider bite them. There can also be a clogged hair follicle that leads to folliculitis, which then leads to maybe an abscess. Yeah, oh my gosh. Be careful with sprays for insects, spiders, all these chemicals around the house. There's warnings because they are harmful to humans. Spray it into his eyes, you immediately see a lot of irritation. Oh man. <gasps> Either he dislocated his knee, fractured something in the lower extremity, or he injured his back. Hmm, where's the pain? Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a couple seconds before you actually notice like the pain and then it sets in. That's just normal how our bodies react. It just takes a second. Oh my gosh, and a big spider. <gasps> oh gosh. So garage doors these days have sensors when they're automatic, so this probably would not happen, but he's getting hit in the neck, which you worry about cervical spine injury as well as crushing somebody's airway, AKA the trachea. It's not like it's a malfunction. George just pushed the clicker to get it back up. Uh, he looked dead. He's dead, John. He's blue in the head. When we see people like this, they are not breathing or living. CPR while waiting for other kids to finish their math tests. <gasps> ah, there we go. So interesting. Good job, Lisa. Look, listen, feel. She's looking. She's trying to feel for a pulse. She's giving a rescue breath. Compress his chest. I'm on it. <laughs> Not the right way to do CPR. If you find somebody unresponsive, please shake them, check to make sure that they are actually unresponsive. If they are, please have somebody call 911 or somebody go get an AED. Then you're checking for a pulse. You're also looking and trying to feel if they're actually breathing. Typically, if you're not trained in CPR, you can do hands-only CPR where there is no rescue breathing and you just start doing chest compressions between the nipple line, middle, and you're doing it at about 100 beats a minute to say a rhythmic song of like, staying alive, staying alive, staying alive. It's all right, it's okay. You wouldn't believe what happened if I tried to do it. You told me to do it, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> Not too often do we have people wake up from a cardiac arrest and get up and walk around the middle room. Yes, there is some confusion, but when we get people back, so to speak, from cardiac arrest, which is unfortunately rare, they're actually still in a pretty bad shape. Look at this mess. I told that boy a billion times to pick up his job. <laughs> I say that all the time. <laughs> Son of a Falling downstairs. It is super common. I always ask, are they carpeted stairs? Are they wooden stairs? Are they concrete stairs? How did they land? What's hurting them? Basically, you have to poke and prod the whole body just to make sure that there's not an area that isn't hurt. Mm, I like to play with back. you. There goes my back I again. I like to play with mm. you. I like to play with you. Mm. Back pain just is awful. And especially if you can't get up, we worry about something called rhabdomyolysis because you can have muscle breakdown when you're on the ground for a long period of time. I like to play with you. Don't. I like to play Don't with you. Don't get help, boy. I like to play with you. I like to play with uh, you. You know, that's why elder people have the, like, the life alert button if they fall and they can't get up. That's where they can call 911 and somebody can come to the house and assess. Either just get them up or bring them to the hospital. <laughs> oh, fun. During my residency, they actually opened up a trampoline park right near it, and we had so many people come in with fractured ankles, dislocations. It was impressive. Oh, yeah. oh! Trampolines are notorious for causing injuries, sprains, strains, fractures, and dislocations. I've had people come into the emergency department after falls, landing on weird objects, and severing their spinal cord. Otto, you okay? Yeah, just pop my shoulder back in. 
Thanks, buddy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Typically, dislocations of a shoulder, you can get it back in without medications. Putting it back in, you can cause a fracture of either the proximal humerus or glenoid fossa, the, the rim. Biting your tongue, whoo, painful. It can bleed a lot and actually really hard to sew back together. So hopefully it's not a big bite, especially kids that got braces on, even more apt to have like laceration or injury or bleeding in the mouth. Ow! Oh. <laughs> There, that's six years worth of inoculations. Holy cow, oh my gosh. There's been studies to show that there is positive benefit to the use of vaccines, but giving them all at once to a poor kid, that's always up to debate. And it's a good conversation if you're a parent to have with your doctor. I don't give out vaccines as an emergency medicine doctor outside of say your tetanus up to date shot. Occasionally we'll give other ones. Here you are my good man. Giving the doctor cash, yeah, definitely not a thing. And while you're at it, throw in one of those polio shots. Ooh, yes, sir. Yep, anti-polio. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Polio virus spreads person to person, messes with your nervous system, could cause permanent paralysis, disfigurement, and mobility issues. It is a good vaccine to have to prevent this virus from spreading. Kids, come on. Thank your father for the injections. Thank you, Dad. <laughs> Thanks, Dad, for the injections. Some of the vaccines do cause discomfort because the volume that goes into the muscle, so it's uncomfortable, or if it's subcutaneous, different things like that. But Again, the whole point of giving these different types of medications and vaccines are to help prevent disease. Make your new piano mover. Now we're gonna have to put a steel rod where your spine was. Moving a piano and then you're gonna need metal rods. I think he's a big jump unless he's collapsed every single bone in the back. My back! And there's a structural problem relating to spinal cord. Typically putting that much hardware in somebody's back, you try not to do it unless you have to have to do that. Will I ever move a piano again? <laughs> oh my goodness gracious, no. We see people with big rods in their spine, typically from really bad scoliosis that needed to be fixed. Most of the time, hardware that goes in people's backs is very small. But again, you're putting a foreign object in that area. And sometimes it really helps individuals and sometimes it continues the pain, but at least somebody has a structure that they're going to be okay. I love The Simpsons. Always entertaining. They give us good medical scenes to talk about. Thank you, Homer, because he's the one that mostly does all these injuries. Also, I made fast acting health supplements with you in mind. No matter what the issue, I got you covered. Check out Life Happens. You take them only when you need them. If you enjoyed this, check out this playlist right here. We've done 18 Simpsons, 18. Hit that like button, turn on your bell notifications and subscribe, please. Thank you very much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.